All right, guys. So welcome to the last training for 2000 and, oh, is it 2023? Yeah, 2023. Okay, it's the last Mac for the year. Uh, we've got a big four days ahead of us. What I want to first do is just give you the um, schedule of what we're going to do. Um, today being a bonus day, Mac used to be three days and I'll put it to four days because there's quite a bit of gap between ACH and Mac. So really what today is about is just going through all the intricacies. We can do a demo if we've got some uh, volunteers. But it's going through the hypnotic interview, it's going through the testing, the processing, the therapy, whatever you guys want, we'll get a round robin of what you guys want to isolate and talk about. And it gets everybody back into the place of, okay, um, I'm, I'm, my mind is warm again for ACH. So when we do tomorrow, the first thing I'm going to say is, hey, everyone, forget everything you've learned in ACH and let's do Mac. Because Mac violates a lot of the ACH rules. And people say, well, why don't you do MAC first? The sole purpose of ACH, now you guys at the other side, is to show you guys unconscious moments. Without that, you're just doing talk therapy. You're just talking, you're just coaching, whatever it is. So what we've done is we've started from scratch. We go around to understanding unconscious moments and how powerful they are, noticing what they are, when they are, who they are, whatever it is. And then we go back sort of the other 180 around and say, okay, let's go back to start and let's formulate some really insightful questions. And I'm going to give you guys a script, believe it or not, but it's not a script as if no script is just a list of questions you can ask that have different categories. So you get to a place where if you've seen the demos that I've done, you might be thinking, well, how the hell does Scott know what questions to ask? How does he come up with this shit? That's what Mac's going to be about. There's no point just asking a question. We know this with a lot of coaching things. You see, see this on Facebook ads. Download the 20 questions you have to ask your client. It's not a fucking interview. It's not a checklist. We're going to ask a question using very insightful Mac and creative questions, but have the insight of ACH to know which direction or what question to ask. Okay? To the point where it's almost like you can read your client's mind. And this is what Erickson was, was um, such a genius as it almost looked like he could see three or four answers ahead. He was always three or four steps ahead of his clients. And that's why it was so goddamn fast. Okay. So with ACH, we learn what they are and how to recognize them with Mac. It's really focusing on the hypnotic interview because that's where everyone struggles. And I did too, because everybody will ask the same question. What's the problem? How's that a problem? How are you feeling now? I did it too. And then once you've asked those three questions, you think, shit, what do I ask next? I'll give you a list of, I think it's about 70 or 75 questions I'm going to give you. And we're going to drill those for two days. And then the last day is going to be the business stuff. Okay. So we've got a full day, depending on how many questions we have and uh, what we're going to do. Yell it out to me. What do you guys want to get out of today? If there was one thing I could teach you more of, so you could really clearly understand it, what would that be? A demo, hypnotic interview, testing. Why do we do this? How do we do this better? Yell them out to me. And that way we can uh, isolate one specific thing at a time. What do you guys want to learn the most? And I'm going to write these down so I, we can go through them one by one. Hypnotic interview. Hypnotic interview, of course. Excellent. Hypnotic interview. Yep. What else? Just some of the questions. What's that, sorry? Uh, just some of the questions. Is my mic working? Yeah, it is. Yes. Okay. So um, you... Just some of the questions like um, the 75 questions, I believe you said. Yeah, so we'll do that tomorrow. Okay. I'll we'll leave that for tomorrow. Today, we'll just do purely ACH catch up and just getting everyone bored on that. And then tomorrow, we'll start from uh, the, the questions. Oh, Fritz will actually post it in the group. Actually, guys, we'll get a download and we're going to just go through one by one by one by one. Uh, testing, good one. What else? Um, maybe some refresh on um, some unconscious moments as well. That would be good. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Unconscious moments. Is this difference from the hypno hypnotic interview? From the moment they come, or, or, do the phone consultation um, or and sit in your chair? The lead in. Okay. So how do we start? That's a good one, actually. Thank I've you. talked about that, how to start. And what's cool is we'll go through this stuff, guys, and you think, oh, my God, this is so freaking obvious. That's the point. Because before ACH, this wasn't obvious. Okay? And that's the whole point of this. Anything else, guys? Uh, uh, connecting resource with uh, a problem. Yep. Connecting resources. 
to problem. Yep. Do you guys want to add to that? How do we know if the problem's sort of untied completely? Because that really leads into it, I think. I think noticing those things, because they're really, they're really just an unconscious moment. I guess we could say an unconscious moment, and it will, it will present itself once the problem has been untied. Okay. And I think that's what this does as well is it stops you thinking, oh shit, is this finished? Should I keep going? And then you oversell the thing. And then you keep going for another hour, realizing you should have stopped 55 minutes ago because it was done. Okay. Um, so how to know problem is done. Anything else, guys? Keeping them on the UMs, Scott. Beautiful. I know we've talked about it previously, but um, the refresh should be awesome. Yep, we can. And I'm happy, guys, talk about the same thing to the point where you guys could almost teach this because it's so goddamn obvious. Yep, demo. And demo will only come, guys, if we get um, volunteers. Um, so tomorrow and the day after, we'll get a lot of demo. I won't say a lot. It probably won't be as many as ACH because really it's just drilling down into all the conscious intricacies, but we'll get some demos done. Because um, on the third day, if you guys are still with me, um, we're going to do a combination of Mac and ACH, and there's a purpose for this. So tomorrow, we're actually going to start with a little webinar so I can show you how to differentiate ACH and Mac. And on day three, who would be interested to learn how to use ACH and Mac on the strategy call? Easy way to close, really easy. But also as well, you can actually start doing the therapy on a strategy call. So when they come in, it's literally that 10 minute session that you're seeing a lot of the advanced students doing thing. And how the fuck are they doing that? As I've said all along, they're doing 80 to 90% on the strategy call. Would that make it easier for you guys? So if you're in the 100K, you no longer have to use the future value deck. You don't have to use the script. You can literally just talk. Okay. But yeah. If you guys want to go through the strategy call, we can look at some stuff today as well. Strategy call. Uh, why not? That's part of ACH. Uh, I, I was wondering too, with the strategy call, when do you cut it off? Um, kind of like an 80, 20 rule. You don't want to solve the problem on the strategy call and it be free, but when do you, what, what cues do you need to look for? to when stop asking questions and then, you know, see yeah. them next time. Yeah. So I can answer that now. Um, if you're purely just doing the strategy call right at the start, even once you've finished Mac, stick to the script. Just follow that script verbatim. Once you're sick of using the script or you understand the, how it works, then start using the Mac. Now, here's what will happen. And hopefully everyone who's done this will have witnessed this because I've done it too. First time you use Mac on a strategy call on ACH, You'll oversell it. You'll solve the problem within 10, 15 minutes and you won't get paid. So what? Everyone goes through it. So you'll learn how to get them just on the cusp of that that um, that cliff before they fall off. It's like that cliffhanger when you watch a movie. That's where we're going to take them. That takes time to learn how to do that where you get an instinct like, oh my God, Josh, shut up. You've got them. Just shut up. You get paid 1,500 bucks. By the time they come in, they sit down, you ask one question and bang, session's done. That's what we're aiming for. But you'll always overdo it. You will underdo it. Eventually, you'll find that happy medium. So like I mentioned, if you're doing the strategy call right away, just use the script. Be comfortable with it. Get to five, 10 grand a month and then switch to Mac. Awesome. Okay. Uh, what else, guys? You know, when, uh, um, at metaphors they... and identifying and breaking loops. Oh, yeah. Uh, breaking loops. And metaphors. Yep, got metaphors. So breaking oh. loops, identify, identify. Oh, God, how do you spell identify? Well, that's good enough. You guys aren't going to see it. Identify loops. Yep, what else? You know when they first come on and they start really fast going into their life story and it feels like it's going to go forever, just really good ways to break into that, like when is a good time and good ways to do it. When they really go fast like I am right now and you're like, oh, my God, how can I break into her? So yeah. I'm still doing it. There you go. <laughs> We can talk. We're gonna. We can talk about that today. So breaking right. <laughs> conscious conscious fluff, I guess we could say. But I'm gonna give you something tomorrow that allow you guys to use that conscious spewing of fluff to your advantage. So even if they don't shut up, you can actually formulate an an isolated resource while they're just talking nonsense. Wouldn't that be cool? Because at the end of this, guys, you would just have all of these different tools, so to speak. So it doesn't matter how the session starts, what it looks like, what a client says you'll be two or three steps ahead. Literally no need to think anymore, okay? Uh, what else, guys? So we've got a lot. What else? <laughs> what about any of this for self-hypnosis? 
Um, yeah, I don't think you could really use it. So just follow the self-hypnosis training. Um, that's the best place. Because remember, with self-hypnosis, it's very hard to think. No, it's not to think. Very hard to be the therapist and the client. But you don't want to add too many things to it. If we give you too many tools, then you start being really conscious again. So just stick to the basics. Awesome. Um, what about um, what about Mac for groups? Yeah, let's talk about group stuff. Group. Um, ACH and Mac. Cool. That's a good one. Anything else? Hello, Scott, everybody. I've got a question. So have you got um, – I've noticed you've got a particular thinking style, Scott. So have you got any um, filtering mechanisms or sorting mechanisms as to um, sort out the information and also, um, yeah, just decipher am amongst it? So yep. the things you're like comparing. That. Yep. So – Thinking strategies, that'll be help, helpful. Knowing that we're going to look at that tomorrow as well, but that's a good one. I think anyone's asked that before, but I can definitely go through what I think and how I think and how to delete a lot of the stuff clients say. Um, and you've heard me say it before, but we'll drill it into you guys so you stop violating those things. Violating is such a, such a bad word, isn't it? It sounds so definite, but that's, that's what it is. Um, so thinking strategy. Let's do that one first because that'll be a good start. I want to do that one first. Uh, what else, guys? I was just thinking, actually, just building what you just said, that would be really useful for that. When you get that desire to start writing notes or you want to yeah. try and write something down, that would be great because yeah. then you won't need to let all this. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it crazy that you can you can understand this stuff unconsciously? And that's why I sort of cringe when I see other trainers do the more traditional stuff. That will tell you everything is unconscious. Clients' problems are unconscious. You'll never know what it is. until This is a, a valid rule. Everyone goes by this. But then they say, then go ahead and do all this conscious stuff. Read that script. Follow this technique. It violates the very thing they're telling us to do. So when you've got the urge to write the notes or go back to the script, what I want to find out from you guys is what's making you do that. Where are you lost in the process? And that'd be a very easy thing to fix. So that, that's a great one. And I like the thinking strategy is going to be really helpful. Okay. Um, anything else, guys? Could you cover um, using Mac in content? Yeah. So Mac in content. Yep. Definitely do that. What else? Uh, I'm wondering about, say, um, when the client comes back for their second session, they've come back and said, hey, you know, I'm not sure if that really worked or whatever. Um, is there... An approach that's maybe slightly different than the first session. Yep, definitely. So second session start, how to. Yep. Everyone's going to see this in my content next week. Thank you for this. Anything else? What have we got about 10, 15? We can start with these ones, guys, and then we'll, uh, if you guys got questions along the way. All right. So again, take notes if you want to. It's, it is recording. Yes, it is recording. All right. So let's start with the thinking strategy. What has been the biggest shift for you guys to go from more traditional trainings to ACH? What has been the most difficult shift? Because that'll let me know what we need to isolate. What has been the biggest shift for you guys, thing you've struggled with the most? I'm used to coaching by phone. Yep. So if I have to go on to Zoom, when you coach on phone, it's really easy just to make notes okay. of key things. So it really is that you know, when I'm on face-to-face, -face, okay. fighting the desire to write things down. Yeah. Going from where a client can't see you, even with the camera on on Zoom to face-to-face, -to -face, why do we shift things? Why do we make it harder? That's a good place for us to... We're going to talk about this tomorrow. This is one of the approaches. Why do we make it harder? Why should it be harder? Is it harder? What's the problem here? For me, there's a feeling like I'm being watched and therefore... And I'm being seen. So what I'm doing, any expressions I have um, can interrupt the client's thinking. They can start judging. Why is she writing that down? Or why is she smiling? Yeah. Whereas if I'm on the phone, right, all they've got is my tone of voice. So that's all I need to control. Right. Who's heard of the phrase psychotic insight before? If you've been to Mac, you would have heard about it because we talk about it tomorrow, but I'll talk about it today. Psychotic insight. So it was a phenomenon that was stated and wrote about that when doctors and psychiatrists were treating quote unquote labeled psychotics.
that psychotics had a, for lack of better words, a, a different or strange filter that would allow them, they're more unconscious, we could say, to have less filters if you were just to define that. They were able to see stuff that the average person watching, it would be invisible to. So what am I talking about here? It seemed like the psychotics were able to see that switch of mindset from person to therapist. Why is she leaning in? Why did she smile? Why did she write that down? Why is she tapping her finger? Well, I'm saying she, let's say I'm the psychotic, okay? And Fiona's my therapist. That sounded weird to say. Fiona's my therapist. And with my psychotic filter, I'm seeing Fiona smile about something that I said that to me is upsetting. Psychotic insight is huge. Who's heard the idea that we know that um, communication is only a small percentage of what we feel to unconscious. The rest is nonverbal. So let's say Fiona's my therapist and I see Fiona tapping her finger like this, just like this, means nothing. Maybe that's just what she does. Then I, with my filter, take that as a suggestion that I wonder if this means she's nervous. Is she telling me to be nervous too? Because remember, my unconscious is wiser than my consciousness. So we're connecting unconsciously. So as soon as you start to trigger a client's psychotic insight, you start to trigger suggestions. Okay. Now, why would triggering the wrong suggestions be a bad thing? Remember, nonverbal. We're not talking about close your eyes and go deeper. Nonverbal. Why would these be a dangerous thing to do? Any ideas? I'm guessing you get almost like the unconscious moment, but you get the negative unconscious moment. It would send it down a path which would be totally destructive. Yeah. Let's imagine this. Let's say I'm sitting back. Robin sits down and says, hey, Robin, you know, thanks for coming in today, blah, blah, blah. Everything's happy. I like your shoes. Yeah, I like your shoes too. Whatever, that normal rapport shit we're supposed to do. And then I go from sitting back, relaxed to, all right, tell me about the problem. What have I now done? Nonverbal, because it's the same question I can ask if I'm relaxed. What is this now suggested to Robin? You've alerted their defense. I've let him know, hey, we're starting. And what does he do? Back away. This is All goes up. I could do the same thing. Robin sits down. And I say, you know, thanks for joining me. He goes, no worries. I'm not saying anything but it still has the same implication. I have now switched, I'm Robin, I've now switched from friendly human being to the mysterious therapist. And if Robin's not ready, defense goes up. Does that make sense? So from a finger tapping, leaning forward, what other things are you doing that could trigger psychotic insight? And the reason I'm, I'm coming back to your point, Fiona, the reason you're feeling it is because you're making your clients feel it too. And it's like a mirror effect. It's that, it's that thing with yawning. One person yawns, everybody yawns. Has everyone walked into a room before when two people have been arguing? You can feel those things. Or if you've got children, you know when they're lying to you. Right? You can feel it. That's that psychotic insight. So what other things do you think you guys are doing that could be triggering the wrong psychotic insight? Scott, I've found one thing that I noticed. If I ask too many questions in a row, mm -hmm. so... How is there a way that you can blend like a normal sort of statement in? Because it's almost like even if there's a gap between questions, it feels like I'm still doing that interrogation a bit, even though it's sort of laid back. But if you can weave like a statement in. Yep. How did you come up with that question? How did I come up? <laughs> I was unconscious. Just something I noticed. There's your answer. Yeah. So when you're sitting with a client, you notice something, you become curious. And again, this is one of the, this is the psychotic insight thing. This is some of the hardest stuff to do. Okay. I still fall into this. You guys could probably catch me do this every now and then. If I'm sort of taking over a demo, I'll say to you, you know, I'll ask a question, ask a question every now and then I might look up as if I'm looking for a question. Is that wrong or right? That's very wrong. What the hell am I looking for? I've got a client sitting in front of me. I should just be curious about them. So I still do it too. 
okay? But as soon as you start thinking, oh my God, it sounds like an interview, you are now doing the interview. Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, it's a psychotic insight thing. What else are we going to trigger? What else could we do that would trigger it? Crystal? Well, so I was actually wondering, it seems like when you are in good rapport with your client, you can actually get away with doing a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. And it doesn't trigger them. Like they still trust you, even if you yell a little bit just to... Yep. shake them out of whatever pattern they're running. Yep. So it kind of, it works both ways, doesn't it? Of course. And that's what we're talking about here. Absolutely. So let's mm -hmm. define rapport. What is rapport? Well, I guess um, I think of rapport as you trust that they have your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. What's the opposite of that? You don't trust. <laughs> and you're judging. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you felt... Uh, like you wanted to open up and someone was judging you. And isn't this part, yeah. we go through this tomorrow, don't we? I say, stop judging people. Mm -hmm. Judgment triggers psychotic insight. Yeah. Another way, and again, to lead on to what you were saying, what if we just stopped being a therapist? Wouldn't that stop us doing all this stupid shit, like leaning forward, changing our voice? Always mm -hmm. cringe when I see a newly studied therapist when they start putting their hypnotic voice into normal conversation. Like but I mean, power. But, but that stuff can happen naturally too, though. Of course. Your tone of voice could change or. And that's the way it should. It's when you try and force these things. Mm -hmm. That's when you become the leaning forward, weird therapist trying to do something. Mm -hmm. And again, this right. is more of a tomorrow thing, but let's bring it up now. From this point onwards, guys, you are no longer a therapist. You're no longer a coach. We started off human being. Who started off as a human being before they became a therapist? Hopefully everybody did. Otherwise, we have to do that alien intervention I'm always talking about. We learned therapy. Then what did we become? A therapist. When we become a therapist, it comes with triggering psychotic insight. Voice, leaning forward, my favorite script. Talk about triggering unconscious uh, the uh, the uh, psychotic insight when you pull that piece of paper out or that big textbook. Doesn't that trigger psychotic insight? It triggers defenses. So we go from human being, knowing nothing, excited, curious about what we're going to learn, to therapist who's very formal, which triggers those psychotic insights. And that's what ACH does to an extent. So what if we break free of that and now you go to becoming human again or becoming a human being, but you bring with it all of those things you've learned. What does this now equal? Almost like covert therapy to the point where you don't even know you've started. Wouldn't that be better? Because if you don't know when you've started, you can't stop yourself. All right. Has anyone found themselves, as Crystal saying, like you're in rapport, you're asking these questions a great old time, and then your conscious mind kicks in and tries to take over and it sort of stunts the session? And it just goes nowhere. But the best sessions you've done, you've walked away thinking, I have no idea what I said. No idea what I did. I don't even know if it worked, but you've got a client and they're drooling on themselves halfway through orgasm, loving it. Bad metaphor, sorry, but you get my point. But then you get insight into that session. You think, oh my God, I've done it. This is awesome. And I know Ivan's fell into this because he's asked me, I've done it. I've nailed it. Then you go into the second session, you try and control it to be the same. And what happens? You fuck it up because you trigger psychotic insight. Okay? So if we could define rapport as just stop fucking caring. Don't care about the question. Don't care about starting. Don't care about stopping. Don't care about being a therapist. Just how about just be a human being who's very curious about what's going to happen next? Would that stop you wanting to write notes? Would that stop you wanting to lean forward? It would definitely stop you judging people. Judgment's huge because if a client says something that triggers you, I can use a, I won't use that metaphor because it's still going on. I was going to talk about the unfortunate wars and stuff, but let's talk about COVID. COVID triggered a lot of people. When do I get vaccinated or not? What if you wanted to, but your client says, I can't stand people who have been vaccinated and you get triggered by that? Do you think it's going to be a good session or not? No. So you've got to be very, very, very careful. 
So just like we make a list of unconscious moments, which we will go through again today, what are some things you could avoid to stop triggering psychotic insight? Voice is a big one. Let it happen naturally. If you lean forward, let it happen naturally. Don't force it. It's not like human being therapist. Just let it happen. So you don't even know you've done it. Okay. Hola. What else do you think, guys? Uh, Jordan, do you have a question? Sorry, I didn't see your hands. Yeah. Um, so if we want to show up just as like a curious human being, should we also emphasize that in our marketing and strategy calls too? Like just saying like, that's what we are. We're a curious human that will listen to them instead of mentioning being a hypnotherapist. You can, but a better way to do it is just be a generally nice person. Remember words, 5% of our communication, five or 10%, whatever it is. The rest is nonverbal. So what I mean by this is, Jordan, you could say, hey, Scott, I just made 100 grand this month. This is awesome. And for some reason, I'm in a bad mood. And I go, oh, yeah, that's awesome, Jordan. Fantastic. Well done. I'm saying the right words, but it's not coming across as sincere. So what if on the strategy call, I stop being a salesperson, which we talk about tomorrow as well. I stop trying to sell. Who's had those brilliant strategy calls where your client says, thank you for just listening to me? And they buy because you listened instead of you can hear when someone's trying to sell you something. But we can't start there because then I'm just saying, hey, be a human being, but human beings are not therapists. So we're bringing all of that learning and all of that insight into being a human being. Well, talk about meta. Okay. So you could say it, but remember nonverbal stuff is way more important. That makes sense. Okay, so what else could we uh, stop ourselves from doing, guys, that might trigger? Always little things, guys. Tapping a finger, it might mean nothing. Just be aware of it. It could suggest the wrong thing. Anything else? Clicking a pen. Beautiful. I went to a stupid freaking NLP training where the guy up on stage says, when you're about to, when you're talking about changing their life, click a pen. So it anchors the click a pen. And then when you go to sell to them, click the pen really fast and that'll trigger it. And people come up with this shit. Okay, what else? Anything else you can think of? I'm guessing this most of this is nonverbal, though, unless you're doing a, a deliberate, let's say, physical action. But I'm guessing it's maybe like tone and things like that or yeah. the pay, even the pace of voice. Yeah, but you let these things happen naturally because they will happen through normal conversation. But when you're talking to a friend, do you change your tone? No. Where are those questions or that listening ability? Where does that come from? It's unconscious you'll be doing it your whole life. But as therapists, we click into therapist mode and we trigger the insight. Anything I have you- a question, please, Scott. Yeah, go for it. With the, obviously, we're using a method, so it's not totally... It's not totally just being our best self because you're using the method. How, how much of this is using the method, but then literally just being, well, just being your best self, the best deliberate version of yourself, should I say? Yeah. Well, you want to do that. You don't want to use the method. You want this stuff to come out unconsciously. And how do you do that and allow that to happen? You practice the hell out of this thing. So it becomes the way you think, feel, and act. Makes sense. That's why it's quite weird. If I get out in public and I'm with friends and stuff, I'm actually really quiet. I don't talk a lot because I've got nothing really important to say. And I just like to listen to people babble shit and think, how the hell is that important? When it comes to talking about this stuff, I can talk about it all day. Business, talk about it all day. I'm quite awkward because I've gone so far to this side where I've stopped being socially, I don't know the word for it. I'm more socially inept. Does that make sense? So... What I'm saying is instead of trying to force the method, you learn that way. You have, we have to, you learn this stuff unconsciously, then I'm going to bring it conscious to your consciousness so we can drill it in. And then you want to let it go and allow it to come unconsciously. It's what I've said in ACH all along, that you just have to trust whatever comes out of your mouth is the right question. Those best questions you're looking for the hypnotic interview come out and you think, oh my God, where the hell did that come from? That was awesome. It wasn't you doing it. It was the other you. Okay, so I mentioned this before, and again, 
I'm guilty of this, looking up, looking for a question. What do you think that would trigger if I'm doing this with a client or I'm a, I know I want to ask a client a question to say Courtney is my client and I go, so Courtney, what I'm curious about is um, what could I be suggesting right now? Doubt. You have no idea what you're doing. Right. And it might be totally wrong, but she's allowed to judge me any way she wants. Now you can do this strategically the way that Erickson would do it. He would pause on purpose and just stare at his clients and make it really weird and awkward. But that works. That's another thing altogether. But looking away, there's no need to look away. You've got an unconscious mind sitting in front of you and it's picking up on 90 to 95% of the things you're doing that you don't know you're doing. And this is really advanced stuff. There's no other trainers talking about this. They're just talking about, instead of saying the word the, change it to and, and that'll be hypnotic. Whatever. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. But before you go, make sure you've headed over to our website and enrolled in our free programs. I'll leave a link below. All you need to do is go over to scottjance.com.au. Come up here to the menu, guys. Come down to free programs and you can enroll straight into our free conversational hypnosis and business trainings. As you can see, we're going to give you instant access to two of our intros, to one of the two of our main courses, I should say, a 100K coaching program, and also an intro into our advanced conversational hypnosis program. There's well over 12 hours of content, plus a lot of free stuff you guys can get your hands on. Thanks for watching.